Hello you beautiful people, it is Tooth here, Tooth Decay. It's Saturday, that means it is pancake day. Not just any old pancakes, American pancakes. Not just any old American pancakes, Brian Lagerstrom's recipe for pancakes. Right, I'm gonna talk you through the ingredients. If you saw our making butter and buttermilk at home video, if you didn't, there'll be a link to it at the end. But if you saw that, you will know that I got myself some beautiful unsalted butter and I got myself some beautiful salted butter and I also got myself some gorgeous buttermilk. Brian's recipe calls for 900 grams of buttermilk. I got 410 grams. So all I've done is I've topped that up with 40 grams of milk. So it's brought me up to 450 grams of buttermilk. A little bit of milk chucked in there. And that's allowed me to halve all the rest of the ingredients, which are 300 grams of all-purpose flour or plain flour as we call it here in the UK. We've got six grams of salt, 30 grams of granulated sugar. We've got one gram of baking soda and about 12 and a half grams of baking powder. Then like I said, I've got 450 grams of buttermilk. It's actually 410 plus 40 grams of milk. Then I've got two large eggs, 70 grams of unsalted butter which has been melted to go into the recipe and then Brian calls for grass-fed salted butter I think I'm allowed to not have grass-fed because we made it ourselves using the double cream so first thing I'm gonna do is whisk the dry ingredients together give that a few rounds I'm gonna pop me buttermilk into me eggs and we are gonna whisk all that together and then the wet is going into the dry and I've heard this before and Brian certainly says the same thing that you don't want an over mixed batter. So we're gonna try and do this in, I think he said 10 folds. So that's what I'm gonna aim for. You do need it all mixed in, but really don't over mix your batter. A little bit of lumpiness isn't a bad thing with this. Right, cameraman, do you wanna come in and give us a little close up of what's going on in this bowl? That's about seven, eight, nine, ten. I I'm gonna give it a couple more because I've still got a fair few dry bits. And that could be, folks, you know, just the size of the thing, this, that, whatever it's called, spatula thing. But I don't want to see any dry bits, but I don't want to over mix it either. That looks okay now as it goes. I can't see dry bits, a little bit there, there's a bit. Oh, there is, there's loads of dry bits, what am I talking about? But anyway, the lumps are obviously going to be dry on the inside, that's why they're lumps. So now I'm going to add a little bit of this butter now this butter, like I said, is the butter that we made yesterday in uh, how to make buttermilk and let's fold about half of that in. How to make butter and buttermilk at home. So it don't really get much fresher, peeps. This was just double cream yesterday and we turned it into butter and buttermilk. Oh, look at the oil in there, that's beautiful, man. Those colors are absolutely stunning. All right, let's pop the rest of this in. And as soon as I'm happy that that has been incorporated, I'm gonna stop mixing and get my pans onto heat. Oh my goodness, oh my gosh. Good gracious, that looks fantastic. Right, I can't see any more big ribbons of butter. You can see that we've still got a fair few lumps and bits and pieces in there, and it's not like a really, really smooth mixture. So I am gonna call that done. I was gonna pretend like everything went really perfect but it didn't, I fucked it up on the first flip. So I'm gonna put that bit in the bloopers reel because this is home cooking, folks. We are not professional chefs, are we? We try our best and we do what we do, but actually, do you know what? I've given the first, <laughs> Mrs. Tooth got the fucked up one. She tasted it, she went, that's the best pancakes we've ever made. And we've made a lot of pancakes. So we're gonna go again and I'm gonna see if for the A roll we can get a perfect flip on the pancake, but Brian, man, we are loving this already. I mean, uh, me and the cameraman had a little taste of it. So we are gonna go again and we are gonna see. They come up absolutely lovely, the color. We've got plenty here. It's good texture, really light and fluffy. So there we go, there's one ladle. There's two ladles. And like I said, I've, I've never before cooked 
pancakes in a dry pan. I've always put butter in there. And what Brian was saying in his video is that you get a really uneven color on it. And that's true, I've noticed that. I didn't know it was the butter that was causing it, or the oil, whatever you're gonna cook in. And I noticed with these, when I turned the first ones over, the color was really uniform. It looked like a, almost like a, sh a shop bought one, but not a shop bought one, because obviously these are pretty big and taste bloody nice. They don't taste like that rubbery stuff that you get with all the stuff, nasties and bits and pieces. Right, folks, we are gonna have another little look-see. Oh man, that colour looks brilliant. Right, hopefully this time, I don't fuck it up. Look at that. So I've learnt. That time I sort of tilted the pan so that it went onto the spatula hole before I tried to flip it. And this one, the cameraman will be trying. That's the trouble with being a home chef, folks, is everybody else gets to eat before you do. Right, pancakes, done. Let's flip this out. You are gonna see the other side of this at the same time as me. So here we go, here's the salted butter that we made yesterday. And then we are gonna get the second pancake and that is gonna go straight on top. Oh my goodness, oh my gosh. Now, excuse fingers, but this is a family house. A bit of honey. A bit of golden syrup. Now, I will say, I've got nothing against maple syrup. We actually like maple syrup. I just don't happen to have any in the house. And I made honeycomb the other day, which is why I've got the golden syrup. Right, dude. You now get to eat. Tell me what you think. Tell the world what you think. Don't blow smoke up my arse either, because it's Brian. Tell him if it's good or not. What do you reckon? Oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> oh, that's so nice. Now, is that better than the ones we do normally? Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that whole batch of batter that we just made turned into, we had two big pancakes each. So like I said, that was plenty enough for a portion. Look at me, I'm a lump and I had enough out of two pancakes. They were about 18 centimetres across, so what, seven, seven and a half inches, somewhere around there. So yeah, six pancakes that we had today and I got another three to go in the freezer for another day. So nine pancakes in total out of that batter mix. I don't think that's bad at all, folks. So for me, this taste test feels a little bit superfluous. There's a bloody big word for a Saturday. Mrs. Tooth has already said, this is our new go-to recipe. First time we tried it, she loved it. Milk Tooth, Mr. Tooth Jr. has also said, best pancakes that I have ever made. So thank you, Mr. Lagerstrom. Of course, being the chef, everybody else has already eaten. It's time for me to tuck in and tell you what I think about this. Let's... <sighs> Gary Eats, you have ruined, let's give it a go for me. Mrs. Tooth says I'm not allowed to say it no more because it's your catchphrase. It's not like it's my catchphrase or nothing. It was just something I was about to say. Let's try this thing. They are bloody good pancakes, people. I can taste that tang of the buttermilk in there. I can taste a little bit of sweet, the little bit of salty. Let me get a bit with some blueberry. They're light, they're fluffy. They are some bloody good pancakes. Now, I was a little bit worried, because in Brian's field, we normally have like a stack of three pancakes. And my batter is normally a bit thicker than that. And so they stay a bit smaller. Now, I was cooking two at a time, but I've got to tell you people, these are like 18 centimetres, so I don't know, somewhere around seven inches across. And they're a good, they're a good after three quarters of a centimetre thick as well. There's plenty enough on there with two. That's just outstanding. I've, I haven't got any other words. That is outstanding. Right, the other words I've got, because I've always got some words, the other words I've got are latest potatoes off your pop because I'm having a nosh. Oh, oh. Right. Got it. Oh, heavenly ball. Uh, oh, whoa. I keep getting that. Right, there we go. 
that's yeah, that's good. Well, so first thing I'm gonna do, turn the mic on. <laughs> oh, look at that! Look at that! The cameraman has just popped the camera down on the counter, and he stood there looking very um, nonchalant. Well, I am feeling shallant as fuck. I am looking forward to this. Brian, you better not let me down, dude. I'm sure you won't. And if there is a letdown, it's probably my fault. But hey, hey, let's give this a go. I can't say that. Gary E says that. Mrs. Two told me off yesterday for saying it. I didn't even realise I'd said it. Well we love you, B-Boy. We love you, B-Boy. Right, I'm going to have to go quick on this one. Oh, you oh. bastard. Good job we've got more pancakes to do. Oh, God. Ah, 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 ah. I feel like Sam the cooking guy. <laughs> Mrs. Tooth got the fucked up one. She tasted it. She went, that's the best pancakes we've ever made. Good, darling. Yeah. Yeah. Mrs. Tooth loves it. Just looking at the ingredients that are in Tesco's finest buttermilk pancakes. You've got wheat flour, which has also got in it calcium carbonate, iron, niacin, and thiamine, reconstituted buttermilk, pasteurized egg, sugar, rapeseed oil, it says humectant, glycerol, fermented wheat flour, raising agents, which is disodium diphosphate sodium bicarbonate and calcium chloride now some of that stuff ain't food you can't buy it in a shop so i don't know what all that crap is but you saw what we put in this pretty much natural ingredients that you can buy in a supermarket and i think that shows in the end product right it comes out tasting absolutely banging Ugh. Pardon me. i eat antipasto twice just because she is so nice angelina Angelina, waitress at the pizzeria. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba. You are excused from your duties. You may take that and go and eat. Thank you, good sir. Thank you very much for videoing. No problem. Oh my goodness, oh my gosh.